Hey everybody, welcome back to Sensei Steve Says, hosted by Shaggy Doe Martial Arts. Uh, today we're going to be talking about improvised weapons. Now, what I'm talking about when I'm saying improvised weapons are things that you can pick up or carry around or walk around with uh, that you can use as a self-defense tool. Okay, uh, So I've got a, a pretty good collection of just different things that you can use. I'm going to just give you guys an idea of a couple things you could do with them. I'm going to give you some ideas of what weapon uh, we already train with that is kind of close. Um, and, you know, just a couple different things for that. So we're going to start off nice and easy. We're going to go for the pool cue. So a lot of bars have um, pool tables. And I happen to have one of these in my house. It's just kind of really nice. Um, but there's a couple parts to this. So on a pool cue, if you think about it, you got a fat end and a skinny end. If I take the skinny end and I whack somebody with that, it's probably going to break this thing. However, the fat end is about as thick as my regular bow is. So if I, as long as I choke up on the grip a little bit, I could probably get a couple good hits out of this without breaking it. Another thing to think about is the fact that these things come apart. Most of them do anyway. So if I've got just the back end of this, I've got my nice pointy um, part that I can be doing my stabs and strikes with, thrust strikes and uh, snap strikes and that kind of stuff, and still have a pretty good base um, to swing. This basically turns into a collie stick um, or a screamer, depending on where you're from. Um, if the whole thing's still together or you have one of the old school ones that doesn't come apart, then you can still use the skinny end for your stabbing, um, your thrust strikes, your snap strikes, and the such, but you probably won't want to swing with it because, as I said, you'll probably break it. Now, if you do break it, this thing gets really sharp, um, you know, as wood typically does, and that'll bring about a whole different set of, uh, of tools. So this thing's going to get used pretty close to a bow or a short staff or just an escrima. So you can swing it around as such. Um, your blocks with it are going to be the same. You can block with two hands. You can block with the bottom of it. You can block across your body to kind of like strike at the appendage that's attacking you. Um, but a uh, pool cue is, you know, a pretty useful, pretty useful weapon. Um, moving on to another one that I've already talked about a little bit when we did our nunchucks is a jump rope, right? Now this one happens to be broken, so I brought it out. But a, uh, a jump rope is a phenomenal self-defense weapon um, for a couple reasons. If you think of a nunchuck, right, the whole uh, dangerous part of a nunchuck is the fact that you can use centripetal force um, to create a little extra speed, a little extra power, um, and you can deliver that onto a target, right? So I can get something spinning really good, and I can swing it um, to do damage, okay? Now, this has a plastic end on it. Is it going to do a ton of damage? Probably not. If I smash somebody in the face, is it going to do more? Probably yes. Um, a big thing to think about with improvised target or improvised weapons is your target, right? You know, a bow typically strikes for, um, you know, if you're doing snap strikes, you're going for um, pressure points, you know, the, the important ones, your solar plex, uh, you know, the, the between the eyes, you're aiming for the eyes, um, groin, if you're striking with the um, side of the bow, you're aiming for large muscles, thighs, ribs, um, uh, bicep, triceps, you know, to do damage like that. For something like this, if it's fragile, you're generally going to want to aim for your softer targets, right? Your eyes, um, a side to the throat, something like that. So generally, you know, unless you're hitting something like that, this isn't going to do a lot for you as a striking weapon. Now, if I take this and I keep it as a string, I can do a lot more with it, right? I can, like in a nunchuck, I can block with it open. Right, block across, block down. Um, but I can also tie a wrist up. I can tie a leg up. I can tie somebody's wrist to their leg. Um, you know, however I want to do this. I can use it as a garret um, to choke somebody out. If I if I have this around somebody's neck and I apply downward pressure, 
Um, I'm going to be choking them out. And it's really hard to get a string off of somebody, especially because you can sit there and crank on it. Okay. Now, again, the legality of that is a separate problem. Okay. You have to be sure that you really need to defend yourself before you choke somebody to death. But, um, you know, with this, you have the ability to do that. You can even just push them into it. You know, you push, um, push the, their back into them with your knee. Um, and that gives you a little bit of pulling force with two hands. Uh, and this, you know, these ropes are not going to break that easy. Even the, uh, the polypropylene ones, the speed ropes and that kind of thing. Um, especially if you get two, two or three loops on it, they're, they're not going to break, right? They might stretch a little bit, but they're not going to break. Um, as far as like speed chucks or speed, uh, ropes go, a lot of them tend to have a much heavier handle on them. I happen to have this, this leather one that I, uh, ever, I use every once in a while. So this, if I were to swing this one around because of the, the weight of this, the end on it, cause this is wood with a leather, uh, a leather strap. If I swung this around, I could do some real, real damage with that. Uh, and that opens up some of my targets instead of just aiming for the eyes and the throat. Now I can aim, you know, the temples, the ribs and stuff like that, where I could potentially do a little more damage. So if you've got a weighted handle, um, that kind of changes it up. I can still do the striking like it was a nunchuck and the blocking with the rope. Um, so moving on from that, uh, we go into the little more a little more obscure, right? It's just a t-shirt or a towel. Now, like the, this is effectively a jump rope without ends on it. If I smack somebody with a t-shirt, it's really not gonna do anything. I understand that. But I can still use it for my blocking weapons, right? I could strike with it with two hands and hit with the, the flexible part in the middle uh, to keep tension on it. I can um, use it as a, um, it's kind of like a glove, right? So if somebody's got a bladed weapon uh, and they're fighting me with it, I can put, you know, something on. It's not going to stop a knife, right? That, that's not what I'm saying. But it will provide some marginal level of protection, okay? You're, you're not going to stop a knife, but it will keep it from cutting deeper, okay? Um, so don't go out there thinking, oh, my t-shirt's going to stop a knife. It really isn't, all right? But, uh, you know, if, for instance, if you're trying to get through a glass window or something, you know, you could wrap one of these things around your arm uh, before you put your hands through the window, and that gives you a much better chance of not cutting yourself uh, all the heck when you punch through that window or you strike through that window. My suggestion is do it with your shoe if you're going to break through a window. But, um... You know, you can also use this as like a blinding weapon. I can throw this at somebody's face um, to give them that half second of, oh, I can't see this, right? And to follow it up with a punch or something like that. So, um, you know, I can I can use it as like a shock and awe kind of thing. Uh, if you ever want to see how to use, like, uh, the, I think the best person that I've ever seen um, do improvised weapon stuff is Jackie Chan. You watch Jackie Chan on the internet and his movies on any of his stuff. Um, he tries to incorporate a lot of like comedy into the martial arts that he does, which is really cool. Um, but as part of that, uh, he is very, very good at using improvised weapons, um, smashing the clothing board out of the wall onto somebody using a chair and stepping it around it a bunch of times to smack somebody with it, you know, throwing stuff at people's faces and then hitting them. You know all that kind of stuff so if you're ever interested in just trying to you know use your imagination on different things you could use he's a great one for that but this is something you know a t-shirt something that you're you're probably always wearing or almost always wearing you know some kind of shirt it doesn't matter if it's a t-shirt or sweatshirt or whatever you can use it for the same uh basic tool okay you can hold it in your hand you can use it as a weapon you can throw it at somebody um you know whatever and that is a tool that you walk around with. And it doesn't have to be a shirt. It could be your pants. I mean, I'm not going to judge uh, if you want to fight without your pants on. But, you know, in a self-defense situation, it sounds funny, but you do what you got to do. All right. Um, so along those things, another thing that you carry around all the time. 
or at least if you're over the uh, the driving age. Keys. Everybody's got their own version of keys, you know, whether they have a lot of them or a few of them or, or however they're doing it, right? But I got a couple options with this. I can just hold them in my fist, right, to kind of reinforce my fist so that my punch gets a little bit harder, okay? So it's kind of like uh, the old school holding on to a roll of dimes or roll of nickels. Um, it's kind of like a poor man's brass knuckles, which I think is funny because brass knuckles actually cost less than a roll, roll of dimes, like 10 bucks. Um, but brass knuckles aren't usually that much. But it's still like a, it does the, basically the same thing. It reinforces your fist. Now, a couple of other options, depending on your key ring setup, is you could put a key or two um, between a couple of your knuckles as a puncture weapon for when you're punching. Now, I happen to have this like uh, this little Gerber pry bar tool here. So if I were doing this with my keys, I would do it that way. And I would have a little pry bar tool to add a, a smaller point to when I'm punching, right? The important thing to remember for these is uh, the physics equations, right? Uh, force equals mass times acceleration. That's how much force you can put into your arm. But damage is determined by pressure. Pressure equals force divided by area. So the smaller the area, the greater the applied force. Okay. So if my, you know, if we just say that my top two knuckles is two square inches, and then I knock that down to, you know, the two points on the pry bar here, uh, that force, you know, is exponentially higher. Or that applied force is exponentially higher. It's the same reason an arrow with a with a point on it will cut, but an arrow with a tennis ball on the front of it will not. Okay, um, you know, so you could get that to work however you want. Again, keys are a distractionary. Uh, you can throw them at people um, if you didn't need it to get away. You can use them as kind of like a rake. Uh, if I hook my finger into my keys. So they're kind of, they're all here. I can rake with that across like the eyes or a soft target like that. Um, and as I said, you can punch with them. Um, if I were going to punch with these keys, I would probably put two of them at a time, um, just because brass is soft. And as soon as you punch somebody, I would expect that the keys are going to bend a little bit or break. Okay. So if I have a couple keys in each finger uh, and I do that punch. I probably stand to get at least a couple punches out of that. Now understand also what you're holding on to is the backside of that same key. So the chances of you hurting your hand when you do that are kind of high. Um, but you can throw them at somebody. You know, it's just that it's loud. It's a distraction. You can throw them up right in front of their face. You know, oh, like that. Um, you know, keys work pretty good. For the students, a lot of things that you guys normally carry around are, uh, we'll start with textbooks. All right, so I got my American Corrections book here for when you uh, do your self-defense in the wrong way. Um, but basically, uh, so this thing, what I've got is, is a basic shield, right? So if somebody's throwing a punch at me, I can block it with two hands, right? This is a hardcover book, even a softcover book. It, it spreads out the force enough um, it'll bow in half, but you can block a punch like it's a board and the chances of them breaking through it are very slim. Uh, I can, you know, if I, if I know about this fight ahead of time, you know, and I, and I'm trying to get away from it, but I can't, I can put a book, you know, in my shirt. If I got a tucked in shirt, I just slap it in there. Uh, and that's going to give me a little bit of, it's basically turns into plate armor. Um, kind of like a hard plate, a trauma plate on a, on a, bulletproof vest, right? Having that there, which means if I take a shot to the, the, the chest to the solar plex or whatever, it's going to spread that force out. Uh, I can also use this as a striking weapon. Generally, again, I'm going to use the smaller sides for the striking weapon. I could stab with the, the side of the book, whether it's the binding side or the, uh, the page side or whatever. Um, you can smash with two hands. I would suggest not doing that again because well, at least with a hardcover book because they're better tools hitting it with the side of it is going to be much more effective um if it's a soft cover book you know you're going to get that slap out of it uh if it's a hardcover book it's not gonna i mean you'll get a slap out of it but again other things will do more damage um but 
really any of these, uh, whether it's smaller or bigger or whatever, even if I had one that's half the size, I can do the same stuff with it, right? I can, I, excuse me, jab to the throat with it. I can block a punch with it. I can block a punch as like a, as like a shield, or I can block a punch to like attack the arm. Like instead of doing two shootos to do a block like the self-defense we did yesterday, I can come in and punch into the shoulder um, to do something with that. These also work good if uh, if the opponent has some kind of weapon, uh, especially a bladed weapon. Uh, chances of them stabbing through a book are very slim. Okay, they might make it to the other side, but their knife's going to be effectively stuck, and then you can you know twist to get the knife away from them. Again, in a knife fight, expect to get cut. You don't want to be there. If somebody pulls a knife, literally the best thing you can do is leave, um, because if you engage at all, uh, you will get cut, and you might get cut anyway. Okay. And it's not like the, the Jim Carrey sketch of the days of old on Saturday Night Live. You're like, okay, you attack like this. Uh, people tend to attack like sewing machines, which means they go stab, 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 stab. Uh, so if I can get this in front of one, twist it, uh, and that saves me from getting stabbed an extra three times, uh, that's important. Um, but books work for that. Uh, again, in it could be in your shirt. It could be in your hands. It could be on your backpack. Uh, you could use your whole backpack as a shield. And it, effectively, a backpack is going to work very similarly to this book. Now, if you have a soft cover book or a magazine, um, what you can do with it changes a little bit. Uh, obviously, I can't chop somebody with a binding of a magazine. But if I roll this up, you know, I reinforce it quite a bit more. And I can now basically have a stick um, that I can do striking things with. I can strike across the forearm, I can strike across the jaw, um, and it it turns into kind of like a dead blow hammer. Um, it's not gonna cause the, the massive damage that like a, an actual stick would, but it, instead of transferring some of the force and bouncing off, it transfers all of the force, right? It's like a dead blow hammer is a hammer that's filled with like sand or iron sand or something to that effect where when you swing it and you hit all of that sand comes to the front and just slams into it so all the bounce back that you would normally get from a hammer is absorbed by that and it continues its its downward trip right so this thing's going to do the same thing the pages are going to compress and it's just going to put all of that force into whatever you're striking um it's also thick enough that you can stop you know if somebody had the perfect accuracy and you, you know, you had your knife and this thing was here and you put it into it just perfect, you know, is it going to get stuck? Probably. If you stab into a large book, it's the same as stabbing into, uh, like a book rolled over 10 times. Is that likely to happen? No. Are you going to try for that? Probably not. Could it happen? Absolutely. You know, and sometimes just the possibility is good to know about. But... You know, that gives me just a little bit more range, you know, to in order that I can, uh, you know, go after different targets and stuff like that. Um, also, it's a great bl uh, blinding weapon. Going back to the book, if I throw this at your face, you know, with a throw it open and whatever, as it swings, um, you know, that's distractionary. People are like, oh, shoot. All right. Their hands are, are going to come up. They don't understand what's going on. And even if it only buys you a half a second, that's a half a second you didn't have before. Um, so you can follow it up with a quick kick to the knee, punch to the face, whatever. If I throw this at you and have that punch coming straight after it, uh, the chances of me having a successful attack are much higher, right? And then every successful attack I have makes the chances of my next attack being successful much higher, okay? So this can help buy you your first, uh, your first win. Uh, another thing people tend to have a lot are uh, a ball, a baseball, a tennis ball, racquetball, any kind of ball you can fit in your hand, okay? Now, if you think back to math class, the if you when you hit something with a ball, right, the when it's resting on the ground or whatever, there's one singular point that's touching the ground, it's very small, all right? As the ball will compress, right, and different balls will co compress differently, right, a, Baseball is going to be different than a racquetball or a golf ball, right? But as that compresses, the, the surface area gets a little bit wider. So it's going to spread the force out. But 
you're basically hitting with a very finite point. So smashing somebody um, with a tennis ball is the same as like doing a, a, a chipmunk makite or whatever with my fingers together. Uh, so this is going to be something that I, I keep in my hand and it could be, I mean, it could be just like a rock. I'm going to hit, I can aim for the, like the big targets, the temple, um, side of the jaw. I can aim for pressure points on the inside of the arms, the, the armpit or the ribs. Uh, I can hit to the solar plex or the kidneys, depending on how they're facing me. You know, the targets that I would punch like with an Epon Ken, um, are going to be great for this, right? I have that real um basic point of how i hit something right this one happens to be my dog's tennis ball and you know what it would work just fine if somebody came in my house and i had this in my hand i'm probably going to use it okay uh this is also great for distracting somebody if i whip this at somebody's face or on the floor or whatever i make a big furtive motion and i and this is moving all over this uh the place you know human instinct is to be your your sight is drawn towards motion so if this big yellow thing starts flying near your face, you're gonna to react to it, okay? And again, even if it's just a half second reaction before they re-engage, it's a half second you didn't have in the first place. Um, so these work real well. Uh, as I said, tennis balls, baseballs work probably, really, uh, work super well because they don't compress. Uh, golf balls, I would say, probably work the best, right? They're smaller, um, they don't compress at all. They're filled with like crazy rubber bands. It's how you get them to launch so far when you hit them, um, you know, and they're hard. You know, if you've ever been hit with a, uh, a golf ball, even just rolling off a shelf and hitting you, it kind of hurts, right? So you can do some real damage with that. Uh, next is your average tchotchke, right? I call them tchotchkes. I'm Polish. I can't help it, right? But uh, tchotchkes are literally just anything decorative that's around you. Uh, I happen to have this Rubik's Cube. Um, now tchotchkes are probably going to be glass cannons, right? And what I mean by that is you'll probably get one or two good good hits out of them before they break. But, you know, so if I've got this Rubik's Cube, you know, the chances of, you know, getting that good solid hit with a nice corner, I probably get one solid hit with that corner. I might get a second hit with that corner before this thing shatters. Then I just happen to have a, uh, you know, for a Rubik's cube, they don't break very sharp. The, the plastics, uh, it's just because of the type of plastic it is. So I might have my distractionary weapon to throw it. If I have some little glass doodad, right, that I just smashed over somebody's arm, uh, now, it's, now if it breaks, it might be sharp, right? And I can use something like that, um, you know, to do some improvised cutting. Um, some improvised attacking of the same targets, right? If I attack the nerves with a sharp object, instead of just stunning them and making them go numb, I could sever them and make them stop functioning permanently. Um, you know, understand that, that the, the, the things that they're doing have to justify you taking it to that level, but it's something that you can think about, right? So if you, if you, you know, you have this broken, sharp glass, cat flower thing whatever and you 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 know you start punching uh pressure points you know the the chances of you doing real nerve damage so that they cannot physically move is definitely there um and lastly the jackie chan special here is a chair stool a chair or whatever right these work as phenomenal uh self-defense weapons, right? Because I can use this in like a hundred different ways. I can sit there and block with it, right? I can keep somebody back, right? The lion tamer and the whatever, right? I got my stool. I got, I don't even need two hands. I can hit it to stop something, right? I got a nice wide area uh, with a bunch of like rungs and whatever so I can block a large area. I can punch and stab with it, right? So if I'm, I'm hitting with these points, um, potentially doing damage. Right, I can block like it's a bow if I grab in the middle somewhere, uh, or you know, block with a big flat part on the stool that I happen to have. Um, I can also swing it, right? So this thing's got some heft to it. If I baseball swing this guy, right, I'm gonna do some damage. Um, whether I swing it, you know, with the legs forward, or if I swing it this way, 
and hit with the legs instead, I'm going to do some real damage with this thing. Um, you know, I can also, you know, do it as simply as just kicking this thing in front of them to make them trip. Um, again, a half second buys you a half second. You can do a lot in a half second. Think about this. How many punches can you do in 10 seconds? Right? If you're ever curious about that, get a heavy bag or punch in the air or whatever. Have somebody time you for 10 seconds and count how many punches you can do. My guess is the average beginner can do at least 18 to 25 punches. Your intermediate people can be do 25 to probably 32. And I know advanced people, um, you know, your, your upper black belts and stuff, especially if they've been training hard, uh, can get almost to, to 40 to 45 punches in 10 seconds. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind, a half a second. So if you think, if you, if you think even 30, right, we take the middle ground, 30 punches in 10 seconds means three punches per second, which means you get a punch and a half for that half second that you've distract somebody, you know, you, they, they might not be able to block your second punch. They might've gotten hit by the first one and that bought you the other half of your half a punch, right? Either way, you know, half seconds, a half second. So uh, if you can trip them up with this, if you can hit them with this, you know, these are great tools. Uh, and then this is kind of, I mean, effectively you're using this as a bow, um, you know, minus the snap strikes. So you've got your, your blocks and stuff, um, but also as, you know, a baseball bat, you know, if you think about it, you know, and the way that that works. Uh, really anything in your hands including your hands themselves, are a weapon, can be used as a weapon. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of imagination, a little bit of forethought. Um, I encourage you guys, if you guys are, uh, you know, one of my students especially, you know, walk, look around your house. Like, literally just stop where you are, look around for five seconds, and find the five things that you could use as a weapon. Right now I see uh, I've got, other than the stuff that I pulled out, I've got a broom that I can use as a... Uh, uh, as a bow, I've got, you know, a large thing of cat litter still. Uh, this happens, this is a great shield. I mean, this will stop, you know, a lot of stuff. This would definitely stop a knife, you know, especially if this thing's full. It weighs 40 pounds. If I swung that at somebody, they would get really hurt. Assuming that I could swing it. Uh, Flip-flops. I got, you know, a pair of flip-flops over here. If you don't think flip-flops do anything, ask your parents about their grandparents, Mary Janes, right? They hurt. You can smack the crap out of somebody with one of those. Uh, I got my 10-pound ring weights. Uh, you can get real damage with something like this, right? Just holding on to it, swinging with it, um, blocking with it, chopping somebody with it. Uh, you're putting them down with something this heavy. But that's the thing, right? You should be able to look around wherever you are and find a couple things that you can use. As, as a martial artist, as a true martial artist, somebody who trains and practices and thinks about this stuff all the time, you should be able to just look around and have the stuff at your disposal. Um, so that's my challenge to you for the day. Look around your house, look around the room that you're standing in while you watch this, and try to find five things that you can use as a self-defense weapon. And if it's not overly fragile, Try practicing a little bit with it. See how you would use it, right? Feel what it feels like to to block with it or to do a strike in the air with it, all right? Be careful with it because, you know, some things that aren't designed to be weapons, if you try to use them as a weapon, they will break in unforeseen ways, you know, so don't break your stuff and don't break things that might cause you injury. But, um, you know, I, I challenge you guys to do that. At least find stuff, right? tripod i've got th i got a couple of them right here tripods work great they work at like a nice bow uh if you got them all the way extended they're nice and long if they're nice and short you got a nice bow uh, uh baseball bat cudgel you know you can do whatever you want all right so that brings us to the end of today's class a uh, couple quick announcements make sure that if you're one of my students you're keeping an eye out for the newsletter it should be coming out in the next day or two uh, the avatar challenge is winding down. We got three workouts left today's and two more. All right. So make sure you're getting those done, uh, and our zoom class tomorrow. Make sure you guys tune in for that. If you're one of our YouTube subscribers, uh, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the bell, 
uh, that you enjoy. You know, if you enjoy what we're doing, make sure you jump in on that. And last but not least, I know there's a big. I live in the country. It's a tractor. Sorry. Uh, you know, make sure you guys like and subscribe and do all that stuff. Um, and also, if you're interested in supporting us or interested in jumping into our Zoom classes because your school isn't open at the moment or you never got the opportunity to train or anything like that, um, we do have uh, tiers in our Patreon that would allow you to jump into some of our classes. So keep an eye out for that. Other than that, I got nothing. You guys are awesome as always. You are dismissed. Us!